All right. Good morning, Love Church. As you can see, we have somebody. Good morning, Love Church. As you can see, I am not Ian. I am Grayson Sawyer for the people who haven't seen me before. Uh, I will be doing our opening for today. So for our morning scripture, we have John 4, 24, which reads, God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in the truth. Amen. And now we will start with our prayer. Dear Heavenly Lord, thank you for bringing us all here together, whether in person or online. I pray that you open up our minds, bodies, and spirits as we receive this information today and that we are able to apply it to every aspect of our life. Lord, we love you. We thank you for everything that you do. Amen. And now introducing our psalmtress, Iana Washington. Keep it inside. 
after me, ready? Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. Say let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. All right, put your hands together for our psalmist, Miss Yana Washington. Amen. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Psalms 150. Let us pray just for a moment. Thank you all for coming. Give yourselves a hand for being here today. Thank you for joining us online as well. Welcome to the Love Church. Let's, let's just come together and pray just for a moment. Lord God, we thank and praise you. We magnify you. We come before you today in the humblest way that we know how. Lord, we ask that you forgive us for anything that we've ever done or, or said or even thought that's not in your pure and perfect will. Lord, speak to us today. Speak to our hearts and minds. Lord, pierce our souls with your word on today. Lord, deposit that word deep inside of us. Let it begin to grow. Let it be, become a tree of life in our life. Lord, speak to us in a way that continues to speak to us. Speak to us to, in a way today that not only changes the trajectory of our life, but allows us to be a beacon of hope for all that we come in contact with. Lord, I thank you for speaking a word today that is relevant throughout generations, throughout the decades and centuries and millennium. Lord, I just thank you on today. Lord, I thank you for being with us and having your way on today. Nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. We thank you. And Jesus, somebody say amen. 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 All right. All right. We're going to get to it real quick. We're going to get to it real quick. We've got a, a segment of our church that is called, Is That Really? Say it again. Is that really what? Is that really in the Bible? Is that really in the Bible? I'm going to read to you two statements, and you tell me if you think this is in the Bible or not. And we will see in just a moment if that's on point or not. So the very first one, you've heard it before. You've probably heard it a million times. Your mama may have said it, but is it in the Bible? Spare the rod, spoil the child. Spare the rod and spoil the child. How many say yes, it's in the Bible? Y'all thinking through it? How many say no, it's not in the Bible? Then you can't vote twice now. You can't vote twice. And number two, number two. Uh, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. We know that to be true, but is that in the Bible? Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. You ain't got to teach a child how to lie and do foolishness. That's just in there. But is it in the Bible? How many say yes, it's in the Bible? How many say no, it is not in the Bible? Oh, y'all are, are kind of split on that one. Okay, we're going to see. We're going to see. I want you to get up out your seats. Go love on somebody today. Love on them real good. Tell them you appreciate that they're here. Grab you some donuts before I eat all of them. Amen. Because I will eat all of them. Y'all love on some folks. Love on some people. If you're watching online, I want you to stop doing what you're doing right now and go love on somebody in your house. Go love on your husband. Go love on your wife. Give them a hug. I don't care if you've been fighting all night. Now's the time to get over it. Go give them some love. Amen. If, if your, your children are in the house, go and hug on your children. Go and hug on your son. Go hug on your daughter. Y'all go grab some donuts now. Grab, hey, grab, grab them. You, you better get some. You better get, <laughs> get some. I've been watching my weight expand. Amen. If you are in the house by yourself, I want you to text somebody and tell them how much you appreciate them, that they were on your mind. You have no idea. That might just save somebody's life. They may have just been like, Lord, I'm, I'm tired of being here. I'm tired. No one cares about me. And here comes your text message. You just never know. Amen. Love on some. Oh, love on somebody on today. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. We got a trifecta of love. We got a trifecta of love. If your kid, your son's in the house, love on them. If your wife is in the house, love on her real good. If the Lord God has saw fit to leave these people here with you one more day, amen, then you need to love on them. Amen. Amen. Hey, hey, cutie. All right. All right. Hey, I love this hat. 
<laughs> it's my favorite hat now. All right. Let's have a seat. Let's see here. Once again, let's go back through this. Let's see. Let's see where y'all at. Spare the rod. Spoil the child. How many say yes, it's in the Bible? How many say no, it is not in the Bible? You said no. Huh? It actually, huh? Spare the rod, spoil the child. Yes or no? Yes. No. It is not. Now, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you what it actually does say. This is where they got it from. Proverbs 13 and 24. He that spareth the rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasten him in, in betimes, betimes. So basically, it's not spare the rod for the child, but you do need to have that rod of correction that is ready. A foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. How many say yes, it's in the Bible? How many say no, it is not? Proverbs 22 and 15. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. But the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Amen. I don't know what I don't know why I was on a rod of correction this morning. I have great children. Y'all didn't do anything to set me off. I'm just letting you know. I don't know what was happening. It was just one of those days. One of those days. Amen. All right. I think I'm about ready to preach though. Can y'all do me a favor and lift up your voice and just say, Lord, speak to me right now in Jesus name. Amen. We have been talking about the fruit of the Spirit. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Galatians 5 and 22. This fruit of the Spirit. So we've been going through this, and we're going to continue to go through this. Um, for those, a lot of you probably have committed this to memory. But here we are. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Say love. Joy. Peace. Long-suffering. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith meekness, temperance, against such things there is no law. So today we are on peace. Say peace. Y'all see me say that at the end of every service. Peace. Y'all probably thought, oh, he's just throwing the peace signs. We're going to talk about peace on today. How many of y'all would like more peace in your life? You would like more peace. If you, uh, if you are a mama, you got some little kids. I know you want some peace in your life. Amen. Amen. Peace is peace. I, I want us to take a look at, at something real quick here. In John 14 and 27, here is Jesus talking. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. My peace. Jesus has a gift for you. He said, my peace, I'm going to leave it with you. Let me kind of put that in different terms. Imagine that you have a good friend. And this good friend says, you know what, I... I'm tired of living in America. I've, I've built myself a, a nice mansion in South Africa. I don't ever plan on coming back to this place. And, and you've got that nice house you built here, and, and you've paid it off, and you've got all of these nice cars. You've got the Bugatti over and then, of course, you got the Lamborghini, and, and you know, I don't know why you end up uh, 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 buying this phantom over here and then your everyday driver of the Mercedes and you did a wonderful job of getting them all paid off and, and didn't you tell me you even paid the insurance up so that no one ever has to make an insurance payment because you put a $10,000 bond on each one of them and, and, and what, so what are you going to do? You even talked about the fact that even in your home, you paid the electric bill up longer than you will live. And so you don't even have a monthly bill. What, what are you going to do with all of this if you never plan? Are you going to sell it? And he looks at you and said, no, I'm not going to sell it. I don't need any money, and I don't want the hassle. And he said, well, what are you going to do with it? And he pulls out an envelope, 
In the envelope, you look in it, you can hear it jingle. It just has a bunch of keys. The keys to the house, the keys to the guest house, the keys to all of the vehicles, the keys to the safe that has $300,000 in it. He said, I can't travel with cash. I can only travel with 10 grand. You're you gonna put that, I'm not gonna put that in the bank. I don't need any money. Well, what are you gonna do? He said, I'm gonna leave it with you. How are you gonna feel? <laughs> I've met people that have enough money to keep my mama quiet while they're killing me. Kill me and keep my mama quiet is a lot of money. That's yeah, that my mama be like, I, I ain't had no other sons. I don't know what y'all talking about. <laughs> I've, I've spent time with people on their private yachts, $30 million yachts. I've, I've eaten at some of the best restaurants that money could buy. I've been in some of the biggest homes uh, in, the, in the world. And, and I've seen some of those people would trade it all for peace. So as excited as we would get, if they were to leave the house and the car and the money and everything paid up, as excited as we would be to get that, we should be more excited when Jesus says, I'm going to leave my peace. What is it about Jesus's peace? Let's take a look at Mark 4 and 35. You've probably seen this before. Here is, here is a story of Jesus. He just got through teaching and doing this thing. And, and the Bible says, and the same day when the even was come, the, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. He's talking to his disciples like, let's just go over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, then they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship. Y'all say the waves beat into the ship. So that it was now full. You don't have an issue when the water's on the outside of the ship. You got an issue when the water's on the inside of the ship. And he was in the hinder parts, uh, the hinder parts, of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Why does the Bible say asleep on a pillow? Say it again. Say it loud and proud. He was comfortable. He was comfortable. Now, I, I, hopefully y'all don't know this, but you know, you go to jail, they don't give you pillows. I'm glad you don't know that. I don't need to get a whole lot of amens on that one. Amen, pastor. They didn't give me now pillow. They took my shoestrings. <laughs> he was asleep on a pillow. He was getting good sleep. Y'all say good sleep. Sure. You know, I, I remember probably the best sleep I ever had in my life. We were on a cruise ship. And I don't know what it was, but... It, you, you usually can't feel this at all, but there was just a little bit of shake on the ship. And I opened the door to the outside of the ship, to the, to the I don't know what the, the, what it's called, but to the balcony, open the door. And a little breeze is coming in, and it was warm. And I was in the bed, and it was just shaking just a little bit with my pillow. That's some good sleep. That's what Jesus was getting. Amen. He was getting good sleep. And they did this. They awoke him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? What you waking me up for? I, what you waking me up for? I, I remember one time, I won't tell you the whole situation, but I remember seeing a gentleman who was sleeping. And I needed him to do something, but I didn't want to wake him because I knew that there probably was no situation that he's having in his sleep that's worse it's going to be when he wakes up. So I let him sleep. What they waking him up for? Hey, man, get up. You don't care we finna die? I'm sleeping. 
And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? It's interesting, if we was to keep reading that, the, the disciples were astonished. They're like, oh, man, he... I can't believe this. He spoke to the winds and the waves, and, and they were still, and they were just astonished. And I always ask myself a question. If y'all didn't expect him to do nothing, what was you waking him up for? <laughs> Why are you calling on Jesus and not expecting him to change your life? I'm going to sit down and say that one more time. Why? Do you call out to the Savior in the midst of your issues and problems saying, please come save me, and you have no expectation that he's going to do it? Why? You're surprised when he heals you. Didn't you ask for healing? I can't believe it. My knee don't hurt. Look, I can uh, But you asked for ye of little faith. He told the winds in the way. He said, peace, be still. They, they were all clamoring and going about, and they were, they were concerned that we're getting ready to perish. They, 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 were, they were on a boat. They were in the middle of the water. That's not what concerns them. The boat was made for the water. It was made for, a boat doesn't exist. You can't see the glory of a boat outside of the water. It was made for for that. It was like seeing an eagle inside a, 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 or as it flows through the air. It's made for that. You don't want to see an eagle underwater. That right there is what we call a dead eagle. To see it in its glory, you have to see it in the air. My, my, my mother, she actually just came back from a cruise. She was sending me text messages this morning showing me what it looked like from her balcony. And newsflash, there was water all around. She was not concerned. Oh, my God, I can only see water. I'm getting ready to die. What what happened is that the things on the outside got on the inside. Understand this, saints. We don't have to be worried and concerned when it comes to trouble. We're built for that. We're built to understand that. We're built to withstand that. Matter of fact, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So if we have issues and problems come up, what does James say? Count it all joy when you see all this happening. When you go through trials and tribulations, don't worry about it. Romans 8 and 28 says all of that is going to work out for my good. I'm not worried when trouble comes. I'm not worried when trouble is on the outside. That's not what bothers Christians. What happens with Christians is when they let the trouble on the outside get on the inside. How can you tell it got on the inside? The Bible says that men speak out of the abundance of the heart. All you got to do is sit down and listen to somebody. Oh, man. How you doing? And then you mad because you asked the question. Oh, it ain't doing good. You know, my toe been hurt and I think they're going to have to take it. You know, my wife been acting up. I, she probably gone when I get home. You know, the job been laying off people. I'm probably going to be next. I already got my bag packed just in case. I got, my, I got my work bag and my home bag. So that way my wife kicked me out, I grab one bag and I'm out of there. They, they, if I come back to my job, I got, I got a custom box to put everything in. And the back of my neck's been hurting, too. And, you know, my car's been acting up. Probably not even going to make it to work. I'm like, hey, man, can you just say all right? You know what I'm saying? But wh- what are they doing? They're saying that the, the things on the outside got on the inside. And, and you might say, well, well, that's anybody. No, 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 no. When you talk to people of faith, you'll be confused. You'll think that everything is always going perfect. You know those people are always bubbly. How you doing? Fantastic. Wonderful. Great. I had, a, I had a guy ask me one time, he said, how come preachers never go through anything? What? <laughs> what? I remember, check this out, boy. I remember a time, I was like 23, 24, somewhere in there. 25, maybe, I don't know. 
two years ago. Praise God. Lift him up. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, we, I'm kicking you out the house. I woke up. Yeah, you know, I'm younger than my daughter. I, I woke up, and I couldn't walk. You know how scary that is? I couldn't walk. Then I went from walking with a cane to being in a wheelchair. Not knowing if I was ever going to be able to walk again. And then the doctor said, well, let's, let, let, we want to test you. You have this thing. And there's two types of this thing. One of them will kill you. So let's just test for that. What? What? Then you find yourself envying old people who can walk very well. Like, look at them. They just walking so good. That's what I'm talking about. Like, they 80 and still getting it. Because my legs didn't work. I remember one day, no fanfare, nobody around, laid a hand on my leg and said, Lord, heal that. And from that day on, he did. I gladly take care of him. And you know what's crazy? Most of the people that were around me at that time, if you ask them to this day, they don't even remember it. My bishop remembers it. Everybody around them doesn't. It's like God erased it from their memory. Healing, asking God for something and actually getting it. That's peace. Peace. The issue is not when the thing is on the outside. The issue is when it's on the inside. We associate peace with quietness and stillness. And actually, that's what the word means. Technically, in, in Texas terms, peace means hush. Be quiet. Go look it up. It's Greek for hush. What was Jesus saying to the wind and the waves? Shut up. When he said, peace, be still. That, when we think about peace, we think about stillness. We think about quiet. You don't think about, hey, I'm going to this... Um, to this uh, rave, you know, and last week I went to the to this rock concert, and and when you start using adjectives to describe the rock concert, you usually don't say it was peaceful. That's not a good rock concert. Ain't no ain't no peace. No, that's not even. No, we went to uh, what's the little brother Jonas? Is that what he called Jonas Brothers? Was that? We went to a Jonas Brothers concert. Is that how you say it, Jonas Brothers? I don't, I don't know the little jokers. Anyway, we get there. It's a million people there. It's a, a million, a million people there, right? And oh, they know every song. I don't know who these jokers are, but I'm the only one that don't know who these jokers are. They know every word. And they're singing, and they've got the little tags on their arm and all that waving and, and all of that and, and, all, and it, was, it was great, it was great it was great, it was colorful it was, it was magnificent, you know what it wasn't peaceful it wasn't quiet it was definitely not still what did Jesus do he took his inside and made it his outside we do the opposite. We let things and people get us down. We're sad because we lost a job. We're unhappy because she don't like us anymore. We let our environment dictate our peace. What did Jesus do? He said, I'm sleeping good. He probably got up, still had to sleep line. Drool going down a pillow, moist and the whole nine. Y'all waking me up. What are you doing? Y'all worried about? Hush. Why y'all tripping? Let me go back to sleep. They're amazed. They were seeing a physical manifestation of what Jesus brought with him. Peace. Everybody say peace. We want to have peace in our life. We don't want a chihuahua spirit. <laughs> Y'all met people like that. Every time you say something. <laughs> Calm down. My, wa <laughs> my, wife, <laughs> my wife showed me something yesterday. 
it was, what was it like they barking at, at the, the, here's the owners barking at their dogs. So you had like big dogs, you know, big Dobermans or something, and the owner would look at them and be like, Ooh. the dog just look at them. You got a problem? <laughs> big bulldogs. Roo. Chihuahua. Roo. That's how we do. The enemy provoke us. No peace. Now, I don't want you to go home to your husband and wife and be like, you know what, you would got that chihuahua spirit. <laughs> don't do that. Just make sure you don't have it. <laughs> Might be why you recognize it in somebody else, because you got it. We don't want that spirit. We want a peaceful spirit. It's hard to find <laughs> a peaceful chihuahua. <laughs> they always on edge. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I guess because they're little, they feel like, hey, I'm in danger all the time, right? I, I got to do, I have to be the threat. Y'all could kill me. You could, you could just be, it could be nighttime. You could step on me and I'm dead. I have to make my, because we, because I, the thing is, I've got to fight. I have to fight my own battles. I have to speak up for myself. We have a savior. We don't have to do any of those things because without no peace, you have no power. Amen. No peace. No power. It's interesting that Jesus, as he's talking about the winds and the waves and the peace and the being still, he equated that to faith. He, he didn't say, why are y'all scared or why didn't you do this? Or da, da, da. He was like, why don't y'all have any faith? Because peace is the, the aftermath, the fruit of faith. It's the reason you have peace. You ever see, I, I think it's probably the, the, the most beautiful thing you could see is a father holding his child. Look at the peace on that child's face. Ain't worried about nothing. Ain't worried about a bill. Ain't worried about a car note. That kid, and you're like, oh, that, that's not the danger to have. He's not worried about being dropped either. He's not worried about is his father strong enough to hold him. He trusts and believes so much so it's not even a thought. He knows my father I don't need to worry about it. You will have kids when something happens, a dog comes, some type of threat happens to a little kid. They will run to their mother and father. And if you look real good, they will grab them by the legs and hide behind them. You know what they're not thinking? What if daddy's scared too? What if mama's going to wimp out and leave me here? You know what I'm saying? She said she did. My, my, my daughter did this. She went out and left the kids. Dog came up out of here. But for the most part, usually, you don't have to worry about your daddy running. My daddy, if daddy might be scared too. But daddy is going to stay and face the threat. My daddy has it covered. My father has my back. Do y'all hear me? I don't have to worry about it because my father has it handled. A, a lot of times when we say we want to accumulate knowledge, believe it or not, knowledge sometimes gets in the way of faith. It gets in the way of faith. You know, um, Years ago, I, uh, I, I went to the doctor, um, come to find out I had a heart condition that I was born with, right? And um, they were like, oh, man, yeah, we're glad you came because, like, you could have died just going to the dentist. Like, how, how 
how is they kind of explained to me. I still didn't get it. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Okay. And they said, well, you need to take these precautions for the rest of your life. So, okay, whatever. Years go by. One day, same thing. Hand on the heart. Lord, heal that. Said, no fanfare. I didn't get up in church and say, okay, everybody stop praying for me. When the, no. Lord, heal that. Months went by. And fluke I went to like my, my wife is like it's a good wife we always want you to get you know checked out so I'm like okay let me check out make sure I'm still good you know so I stopped by a little care now whatever scared every they hooked me up with all the stuff and scared everybody there okay they gave me nitro pills they called the ambulance mind you I'm feeling fine like I'm like what are y'all what did y'all see you know what I'm saying As I'm not feeling it. I got in the ambulance and I'm like, hey, can you not hook all this stuff up? Like, I feel fine. I got stuff in my nose. I'm like, I'm, o- I'm okay when I started. Like, y'all finna mess me up. I get rushed to the hospital. Little brother comes in. He see tubes all in his, his big brother. Say, hey, man, before you freak out, none of this stuff is even hooked up to nothing. Like, they just left it on. Right? They came in, chest x-rays and the whole line. They looked at my charts like, oh, you got this issue. We need to send you. Have you been to a heart doctor to get checked out? I'm like, not lately. So, okay, we need to send you because you, you need to keep tabs on that. Okay, whatever. I get to the heart doctor. They do all the same tests that they did the first time. And they kept asking me a question. Who told you you have this issue? Oh, this heart doctor. And Okay, da 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 I got asked that question probably 10 times that day. Who told you? We see in your chart. Who told you? Then I get down to the last thing, and they put this little baby monitor on my chest to see my heart. And I remember because I had done this before. And a doctor came in. He said, who told you you have this issue? I'm like, oh, cardiologist. Like, he's a cardiologist? Like, yeah. They're discounting everything because of their knowledge. Okay? Because they are knowledgeable of all of these things. So they're discounting what I'm saying. And they're like, you don't have this issue. And then I said, yeah, it's weird because the last time they hooked me up, Here's what the picture looked like. And I explained to them. And I'm like, hey, yeah, that was going the other way. And see, all the stuff was going this way and the whole nine. Their face went white. They were like, how do you know that? I'm like, no, nah, it's just what it looked like last time they hooked me up. It's, what it got it's like, well, that would be the issue. But that issue don't fix itself. It's like you born without a leg. You don't just have a leg, right? Say whatever you want to say. We look at the same thing. It ain't there. My chart says it was there. I'm telling you what it did look like before. I'm not a doctor, but I'm telling you what it looked like. Y'all know it looked like that. I, I couldn't be making this stuff up. Whenever did you see that, right? Their knowledge had them confused. My faith had gave me peace. So sometimes just because we know a thing doesn't mean that we don't need to have faith at the same time. He said, you don't have any faith. Why are you looking at knowledge? You're looking at the winds and the waves. You're looking at how this boat is responding. And you remember other people in boats and the boats going down because they went through the same thing. Your knowledge got in the way of your faith. I'm going to say this. Not as Christians that we, we don't believe in knowledge. We definitely do. It's not that we don't believe in science. We definitely do. I came to Christ through science. But understand there's something that belief doesn't need knowledge. Doesn't. Right now in Bible study, we're going through Leviticus and we're talking about the things God has set for us to eat and not eat. Belief does not require knowledge. Ironically, the stuff that's on the unclean list that you said we should not eat, things like shellfish and that kind of stuff, When you eat that, it causes health issues. We don't need to know that. He said, don't eat it. My faith and belief does not require that I go and do all the research associated with what he already said. I would only do that if I don't believe what he said. Oh, I don't believe that's right. We should eat shellfish all day and shark steaks and whale and the whole nine. I can do whatever I want. I can eat as much as this pig as I want to. Okay. (laughs) And you will have your reward. Faith 
and belief does not require your knowledge. Back when my daughter, my, my uh, baby girl, when she was turning 15, she was 14 years old. We were riding down the freeway. She seen AT&T Stadium. She said, I want to have my 15th birthday party there. That's a $1.2 billion structure. The Cowboys play there. They have a retractable roof. At the time, it was the most expensive sportsplex ever built. There were so many world records set in that place, I lost count. She had never been in it. She didn't have any knowledge of what Arlington had to do to get it there or all this other stuff or how long it took to build. She said, I want to have my birthday party there. She didn't call and see if it's even possible to rent out the entire stadium. Do you know what kind of audacity that is for a 14 year old? That's faith. She had a first 15 birthday party in AT&T Stadium. Because my father took it. <laughs> she didn't rely on her knowledge. Like she just say, I just relied on my father. You're going to make it happen. I don't know what it takes. You'll figure that out. The Bible says he will give us the desires of our heart. We ain't got to figure it out. We spend too much time trying to figure it out. The issue with peace is lack of faith. Peace brings about stillness. You know, there's another word for peace. If you actually go and look that word up in the Greek, and it's, an, it's another thing that it means is safety. Without knowing it, we, we associate peace with safety. Because we say, oh, we, we want peace. We want peace in the Middle East. We want, we want peace between uh, countries. We want peace in our homes. We want peace. What is that? We, we, we're safe. How many of y'all want to be safe? Healthy, happy, another complete, whole. All of these are words that actually that word peace means. Prosperity is another one. You might say, oh, well, why is prosperity and peace, why is that the same thing? Let me throw $800,000 in your bank account. Let me see how peaceful you look tonight, how peaceful you sleep. You, oh, <laughs> you don't sleep so good. You're like, Jesus ain't got no sleep on this. Hand me two pillows. I can afford them. We can go back in this Bible, y'all. Like I say, if I say something in the Bible, you can check me on that. Ecclesiastes 10 and 19 says, Wine maketh men merry, and a feast is made for laughter, but money answereth all things. Just don't love it. But it answers all things. How many of y'all would love a new car right now? Money. 800 grand in your, in your, in, in your uh, uh, bank account would probably pay for most of y'all. Some of y'all bougie want a $2 million car, but most of y'all, 800 grand, that'll take care of that new car, Amen. With some change, and, and you would sleep real good. You would sleep peacefully. <laughs> I, said, I, was, I would sleep peaceful in the car. How about that? I just, I don't want to leave just yet. These seats, they're massaging my back, and I'm going to sleep peacefully. <laughs> I can breathe better. It drives better. Amen? Prosperity is in peace. You, you can have peace and, and stillness because you have joy. Not happiness. Joy. Remember, joy doesn't require situations to change. We talked about that last week. See, if you, if you in the joy of the Lord, you can have peace. 
the peace that surpasses all understanding. What does that mean? When everybody else is tripping out because things are going on around you and, 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 and they're flipping out, but they look at you and like, you ain't got the same kind of look on your face as everybody else does. Oh, I've got peace. You ever make a decision and have peace about it? I feel good. I feel right. I feel like this is going to work out. Peace. I'm not worried and concerned. I have peace. Where did that peace come from? Because I have joy. Right? And, and joy is not predicated on a situation. I have joy. Well, where did joy come from? Love. Love of what? God loves me more than I can ever begin to imagine. And because he loves me, he's going to take care of me. It's going to be all right. That's how I can have joy. And that joy will bring about peace. But all of that still goes back to faith. I have this love that the world didn't give to me and the world can't take it away. Why? Because I have faith in a risen Savior that loves me, that gives me joy, that gives me peace. So when we talk about the fruit of the Spirit, we don't have to chase peace. We don't have to chase joy and and try to inflict it into our veins. We don't even have to chase love. We just chase Jesus. I told you before, this stuff in the natural doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that I take a little seed and I throw it on the ground. And it gives me a tree with fruit with seeds in it. That don't make sense. If I was to take my coat off and throw it in the ground, it's not going to bring up a coat tree with more coats on it. Boy, yeah, plant some money, let the money tree come up, it's got more money on it. That don't make sense. That I can take this seed, plant it in the ground, the, the, the seed disappears and leave behind it a tree with fruit with, with seeds in it. That's crazy. But that's the definition of faith, being able to see what's not there and having faith that it will come to pass. So as we talk about this, these fruits of the, this fruit of the Spirit, we, we don't have to chase the fruit. All we have to do is grab a hold to the seed. Grab hold to Jesus. Grab hold to that faith. These other things, oh, they'll come. They'll come as a result. And it doesn't make a difference. You don't have to tell people, I've never had a conversation with an orange tree. And if I did, y'all probably need to lock me up for a little while. The, the orange tree did not ask my opinion. He, he didn't say, oh, is it okay if I bring forth fruit? And if you're not used to being, looking at orange trees, here's what will mess you up. Number one, it doesn't give oranges right away. You got to have somebody that knows what that's going to turn into. And depending on where you are in the world, that orange don't look like an orange. Because it ain't orange. You go places in, in Central America and Belize and the whole nine, you go to an orange tree, you might argue with somebody, that ain't no orange tree. Because I don't think that's how it's supposed to look. The orange tree didn't ask you nothing. It knows its value. It knows what it was put here to do. And it's doing exactly what its purpose is. We need to do the same thing. When we're serving God, doing exactly what he asked us and called us to do, no matter what anybody says around it, no matter what anybody does, oh, these are just some Jesus freaks, whatever. That's okay. That's okay. Let the Lord keep working because in a minute, y'all all going to eat because of it. Joseph went through some horrific stuff sold into slavery, the brothers trying to kill him, and lied on him, and got him thrown into prison the whole nine. But at the end of the day, he stayed faithful to what God told him to do, uh, interpret these dreams. And what happened? Everybody ate because of it. Stay true. Love God with everything you got. Have faith. 
that faith is going to produce love, that love is going to produce joy, and that joy is going to produce. Amen. Y'all give the Lord a hand clap as he prays. Thank y'all for coming to the Love Church. Thank you for watching the Love. Give our online people a hand. They just so, y'all are so wonderful. You're so wonderful. Um, you can join us every Sunday at 1230 to 1230 to about 129. It's 59 minute service. Um, come on by. We'd love to have you here. 1601 North Davis. North Davis. Um, uh, what is it? Right, Arlington right here between Fielder and Cooper. Is that it? Yeah, right off the freeway. Come on by. We'd love to have you. And while I'm at it, y'all give North Davis Church of Christ a hand. These are some phenomenal people. I love these people. They are wonderful. I'm praying that the Lord still blesses, blesses them beyond belief, beyond measure. Amen. So thankful for them. Um, if you would like to donate to the Love Church, you can. You can just scan the QR code that is there on the screen. Amen. And you can give tithe, offering, whatever you want to give. Uh, also, at the very bottom, you'll also see when you scan that, our Remind 101. Um, I want you to sign up for that. That lets you know what's going on. Uh, let me, I got to, you know what, I got to, I got to tell you. So we're doing a, a prayer for the city. And, um, and so we be at these different places praying. And then we be wanting to pray at the, uh, at, there's a uh, apartment complex right here. So Grayson, check, Grayson's, y'all give it up for Grayson. Grayson is, is heading that up. And he's been calling these people relentless because he's like, hey, you know, my pastor said we want to start at this point. That's okay. Let me tell you how the Lord works. Um, this morning I was preaching over here, and out of all the people there, I don't, I, I don't know, hundreds of people, I don't know how many, a lot of people, out of all the people there, I walked up to one person, never seen him before. And we start talking. How long you been here? Been here a year. I said, I, I don't, he said, I live right next door in these apartments. I said, really? <laughs> I said, you know, we were wanting to come over and just pray for the whole apartment, but we can't get a return call. He said, oh, I'll help you out with that. Put a hand clap and some praise up. I know. Look at that. Is that all? Oh, yeah, that's our table. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. So we'll be doing that. Um, if you have uh, some gift cards for our uh, safe family, I don't know what, for our safe family uh, families, you can leave that on the way out. Those $25 gift cards that you donate to our safe families partners. Um, those are, I, you know, I, I call it pre-CPS all the time. So, like, they get involved before CPS needs to. In a loving way, uh, in a more organic and Jesus-filled way. Um, so the kids don't have to be taken away. And um, once everything is together, they return their child back. It's a really, really cool thing. I've seen it firsthand. It is wonderful. We even have, um, uh, we have a, a, a family here. That's becoming a host family, man. I just got the thing. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Very excited. About it. Uh, it takes a lot, a lot, of, a lot of love to give. So thank y'all for for doing that as well. All right. Um. And, oh, Wednesday night. Oh, uh, y'all been enjoying Wednesday nights? Yes. Yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? Uh, we have a Wednesday night Bible study. Our Bible study is through the Bible, line by line, precept upon precept. We are in Leviticus right now, and we go through this Bible. Amen. You learn stuff you didn't know that you needed to know. And you learn a few things you wish you didn't know. Like, I really didn't want to know that, Pastor. I'm like, I, I understand. You know, I, I didn't either. But since the Lord gave it to me, I'm going to give it to you. Amen. Um, and that is at the ballpark at Arlington. Um, it's now called Choctaw Stadium. Uh, just go to 1000 Ballpark Way, um, 6.50 to 8.30. We meet in, uh, you can park in parking lot B at the Boyd. Uh, unless that parking lot is full, then you'll park in parking lot A. Come in through the, the, the uh, I can say silver door, through the clear doors, and in the lobby, we'll meet you down there at 650 and bring you on out. Amen. Uh, anything else? Anything else? 
That's it. We're not going to preach to each other. We're not going to be like, you know, the Lord says. The Bible said we should know them that labor among us. We're just going to get together and have a good time. And uh, we, have, we have our minister of fun. <laughs> uh, and so she's organized a game night, uh, March 17th. That's a Sunday, 4 o'clock at the Magic Cup Cafe, and that's on 3970 Collins. You can bring a board game if you want to bring a board game, okay? Once again, that's at on uh, Sunday, March 17th. So it's after church, uh, not today, but in two weeks. It's third Sunday, is that what it is? I'm so horrible with that. So third Sunday, 4 p.m., Magic Cup Cafe. We will see y'all there. If you're watching online, you are also invited. We'd love to have you come. It's going to have a good time. Amen, have a good time. All right, anything else? We're good? All minds clear? All right, let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the word that you've spoken to us. We thank you for just permeating our hearts, minds, and soul with this word. Let us never forget it. Lord, for those that came here today and they left their house in turmoil, let peace meet them when they get back. Lord, let it be there for them at the front door. Let it permeate their house. For those that had no peace in their mind, Lord, return their mind to a peaceful state. Be with them right now. No matter what's going on, remind them that you are the creator of the heavens beyond a light bill and a car note. We thank you right now. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let every believer say, now I know how to have peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all go in peace loving somebody today. This is Pastor Washington of the Love Church reminding you of one thing, that if you ain't loving, you ain't living. We'll see you next week right here at the Love Church.